Hello and welcome back to the second episode of EM Recap where we discuss some of the top news that made waves across India's northeastern region. So I hope you are ready to dive deep into the world of current affairs and take a look at some of the important stories from the northeastern region that you may have missed. First we start with the war of the Sangmas which this time took place in the Meghalaya Legislative Assembly. I'm talking about Chief Minister Conrad Sangma and former Chief Minister and TMC leader Mukul Sangma. It all happened on September 19 when Mukul Sangma accused the Chief Minister of having a close association with an alleged drug kingpin from Mizoram. The TMC leader even presented two photographs of Conrad Sangma and Henry Sangma, an individual arrested in connection with a drug haul in New Delhi in April 2013. Yes. This is the photograph of the honorable chief minister sri conrad sangma and his wife and mr henry however conrad k sangma termed the former chief minister's allegations baseless and ridiculous he also said that connecting two individuals's activities and coming to a conclusion based on a photograph is the most illogical conclusion that anybody can jump to the next day a heated argument broke out between the chief minister deputy chief minister uh, prasthan singh song and mukul sangma following which assembly speaker thomas sangma expunged the statement made by the songsak mla mukul sangma objected to the need to expunge his statement by saying that he intended to caution the chief minister and not associate him with people who have negative antecedents the controversy did not end there On Friday the legal team representing Henry Lalram Sangha who is also the chairman of 2B's group of companies issued a legal notice in response to Dr Mukul Sangma's claims that Lalram Sangha was a drug kingpin he also demanded a compensation of rupees 20 crore for injury to Lalram Sangha's reputation the council in its statement said Lalram Sangha was wrongfully arrested in 2013 in relation to a seizure of medical supplies despite holding a valid license for such supplies It also clarified that uh, Lalram Sangha was discharged by a special court in New Delhi in 2018 citing lack of evidence of any offence committed. Let me tell you all this happened following a motion by VPP chief Ardent Miller Basamot concerning the menace of drugs and substance abuse in the state. Next up we have the Selchar branch of the National Institute of Technology one of the reputed educational institutions of the country that came under scanner this week leading to protests by students this was after a third year electrical engineering student was found dead at hostel 7 of the institute on September 15 the police said that the student died by suicide however his fellow students alleged that he was harassed by dean academics b k roy which led to his death A ruckus broke out the same evening when a large number of students gathered demanding Roy's resignation. Ten of the students of the institute then set on a hunger strike which went on till Friday which was when the administration removed Roy. Director of the institute Professor Dilip Kumar Bedia met with the agitating students and apologized for being unable to reach out to them on time while also assuring them that Roy would be removed from the post. He also fed the agitating students fruit juice to officially close the indefinite hunger strike. Next on our list we have Manipur where the court on Friday granted bail to five men who were arrested in the state's capital while allegedly carrying sophisticated firearms and wearing camouflage uniforms. Those arrested were identified as Moirang Them Anand Singh, Athok Pam Kajit, Lakhrok Pam, Michael Manchanga Kongthojam, Ramojit Meite and Kesham Johnson the chain of events began on September 16 when the five were arrested under the unlawful activities prevention act the arrest led to widespread protests by mera pibs and other meite civil society organizations since September 17 demanding their release they also claimed that the five armed men were village volunteers a 48 hour bond across imphal was also called on tuesday The situation intensified on Thursday after several groups had stormed police stations in Imphal demanding the release of the five men. At least 10 persons were injured in the clashes between the Meite groups and security forces. This also resulted in vandalizing and partially burning down the home of Deputy Superintendent of Police in Chonga Singh by a mob of around 25 people. Following this a full curfew was imposed in the Imphal West and Imphal East districts. On Friday defying curfew restrictions hundreds of women sat in front of Cherap Court premises in Imphal West district where the hearing was held soon after which all five were granted bail. 
Amid all the turmoil, Manipur also received a small piece of good news when the internet ban was lifted after nearly five months since the violence broke out. This was after Chief Minister N. Biran Singh on Saturday morning informed that the internet ban in the state would be lifted. He also informed that surveillance in the state will continue till the situation returns to normalcy. Internet services, both mobile and broadband, were initially snapped for five days after violence broke out in the state on May 3rd. The ban continued to be extended for five days at a time. Following the July 25 order issued by the state government, broadband services were restored in the state. Last but not least, the much-awaited 19th Asian Games kicked off in Hangzhou, China on Saturday. The event will see many sporting events including cricket. India had sent a 655-member contingent to compete in 41 disciplines. But all has not been well for the country since three Wushu athletes from Arunachal Pradesh, Neyman Wongshu, Onil Tega and Mepung Lamgu, encountered obstacles in their journey to the Asian Games in China due to a lack of clearance from Chinese authorities. These athletes had already received their accreditation cards from the Hongzhou Asian Games Organizing Committee, which also functions as entry visas for the event. However, they faced a setback when attempting to download their travel documents, which are essential for validation upon their arrival in China. This expected delay in obtaining the necessary clearance has unfortunately hindered their participation in the Asian Games. Arunachal Chief Minister Pema Khandu expressed deep disappointment regarding China's refusal to grant visas to the talented Wushu athletes from the state. He also characterized China's actions as unfortunate and the breach of established diplomatic norms. Union Sports Minister Anurag Thakur also called off his trip to China on Friday in protest against China's move. By the way, this is not the first time that the three Wushu players have been denied valid visas by China. The same had happened in July this year and we all know the reason behind it. That is all we have for this week's dose of EM Recap. We will be back next week with more. But that is not all. We would also love to hear from you. Is there a story in your area that is worth covering? Please leave your message in the comment section below. I'm Kalyan Dev and thank you for watching East Mojo. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.